Hi, this is Jake from Optimus Futures, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to open up the trading matrix, otherwise known as a depth of market or a dome on many other platforms. And in this video, we'll be focusing on TradeStation. So to open up any application on this, on this platform, there's typically one or two locations you can access them. One is through the apps bar. You can just simply hover over apps in the top left-hand corner here, scroll over to the right, and then you'll see the matrix. This is what we're after. Now I'm not gonna click this for now. Let's actually show you the other location. This can be done in file, new application, and then of course matrix. You can also use the keyboard shortcut control alt X when you open it up and it'll take just a second. You'll see this is typically a trading dome that you've seen or may have seen on other trading platforms. If you're not experienced with domes and this is your first exposure to a trading matrix, it essentially just shows you the bid and ask size represented in like uh, a visual aspect. As you can see, this is uh, volume bars here. So they're pretty much, and this is a good way to just see volume and depth of volume in the market while having a fully functional area within the platform to actually place trades and trade directly off of specific price levels. So being that we are a futures broker, let's actually take a look and I'll show you how to actually place a futures contract on our trading matrix here. So you can go ahead into the top right hand corner, click on settings, click on symbol. And then if you know it or if you've used some future trading symbols on other widgets throughout this platform, you could actually just click this drop down menu and select from your most recent um, symbols you've used. You can also click on the look up button, go ahead and sort by futures here. Then you can either type in a description. So if you're not exactly sure, but you know you're trading the E-mini S&P 500, you could probably type in SP here, click look up, search through, and then of course everything's gonna be in alphabet alphabetical order here. This may take a little bit longer if you're not as descriptive with your search. The other option is just to simply type in your symbol root here so we know ES is what we're after. Clicking on lookup and then selecting the contract month. Please keep in mind that D does stand for delayed as far as I know. The at symbol there is gonna be and represent a continuous contract. So pretty much just an easy way to avoid having to change the front month every time. It'll automatically just trade the front month and you won't have to swap over um, to a new contract every time it'll just continue on for you. And then finally, we have the breakdowns of the individual contract months. And we're making this video in September. So this is going to be trading in September, the ESU 19. We can click OK, and it'll automatically apply it to our symbol search bar here. As you can see, and this isn't going to apply for futures traders exactly, but you can also filter in equity data and show whether or not you want that market depth to be shown the level two data for these columns here that's specifically for equity and futures is a little different so we're going to go ahead and just focus on the futures for now and click ok as you can see and because that the option wasn't there for uh futures data this checked the level two it doesn't look as descriptive as a volume as we saw in the nyc but we're still getting volume there after it did take a second, so that is good to know. You do get your volume constantly fluctuating in. As you can see, there are a couple of columns. Your open position or profit and loss will show up on the far left-hand side. The orders for the corresponding sections are going to show up in your order size. Then you do have your bid and ask size columns, your main price level in the center here. Then, of course, like I mentioned before, you have your volume bars, and which gives you a visual representation. And then you have the volume for each price level corresponding on the right column right here. Now, at the top here, you do have some things to keep note of. There's um, quick short but shortcut buttons to pretty much activate or close, cancel all, cancel bid, and cancel offers. So once you have something working in the market there, you can just come up here and instantly close out your orders if needed. You can also select now starting from the trade bar over here on the right hand side. You can either set auto limits and stops. You can set specific stop market, stop limit and limit orders up here. That's where you're going to change your order type. Then of course you have your account number. We have quantities. 
we have the duration of our orders. Then if you want to OCO, you can there in there's several different strategies here. So you can do thing as a limit and a stop OCO order or OSO. There's things as one limit to stop, two limits to stop, three limits, one stop, and so on and so forth. You can just do exit with stops only or stop limits only as well. If you want to, you can also click this three horizontal dots here. This will actually give you some strategies you can go through and set as default order strategies for yourself. So these are just pretty much for these breakout orders or bracket orders, excuse me. And this is pretty much just giving you your order defaults for when you do use these orders, what exactly the order durate or order preferences, quote unquote, you can call them are going to be for that order. So let's say, for example, we wanted to go in with a limit order, right? So we're going to select limit stop. We'd place our order on the dome. Being that we have OCOs attached, we have um, for our bracket orders, one limit, one stop. So you can see right here, the limit is just going to be opposite of the primary. It's going to be 100% of the quantity that you chose. The price offset is going to be 10 ticks away, and this is going to be set in uh, the duration and bar settings. So whatever you have on there already, it's going to take that in and populate it for these orders. So again, you're more than welcome to go ahead and change the quantities, change the actions, ch and change the price offsets and durations at any time if you'd like to. And then going forward, if you want to continue to use these for futures, you can click set as default for futures in the bottom left. Click OK, and now you have those settings applied. A couple other things to keep note of, you do have a couple other order entry buttons down here. So you have buy market buttons, buy sell, or sell market, and then there's buy trailing stops, sell trailing stops. Again, you can factor by points, the amount of points, place your OCO orders down here. Again, you have similar OCO functions as, or similar to the OSO functions as you had up here. And again, you can change settings in this section right here. And then other than that, there are some buttons to reverse, close out your positions, and cancel orders all on the bottom. So let's actually just place a simple market order and take a look at what happens here. So as you can see, there's a couple ways to do so. You can either, one, you can trade through the actual dome right here. You can, if you want to, you can place your orders up in the trade bar up here. You can do so in the bottom down here. You can directly click on the price levels, or like you saw, you can click on this little menu button. So first, let's do the menu button. You click or hover on one of the far sides of the dome here. So as you can see, I'm hovering over 29, 79, 75. I click this right facing arrow. Then I have the option to place my orders. So if I wanted to and not even necessary, I can place a market order here. Again, a market order is just going to fill you at the best available price. So not necessary for this, but you can go ahead and use the place order button where my mouse is currently hovering over. Again, we have more market orders. Here we have some trailing stops, some OCOs, and then you just have typical order types, orders with durations, orders through specific routing exchanges, and then of course we have OC your OSO one more time. So if we want, let's just show you how to place, um, let's do a market order right here. We click buy market order. This is very important coming up. If you don't like order confirmations, especially when trading through the dome and want your order placed the second you click on your dome, you can just click don't show this again for future matrix orders. Otherwise, you will get this order confirmation window every time. This isn't necessarily a problem, but it does create a small buffer period where you have to go in and accept this before your order is actually sent. So in the time that you maybe wanted to accept this order, the market could have fluctuated in a potentially unfavorable way, and you may have potentially lose out on some profit. Not saying this is going to be the case, but just something to keep in mind. So we place this order. Now, being that we are using simulated data in this section right here, you'll see I get a little confirmation window that I just need to subscribe to. But as you can see, the second I do click accept, my market order went through. So it's okay for me to go ahead and cancel it if you want. You can cancel it in the bottom right hand corner, but just wanted to show you what a simple market order looked like. Okay, so we just canceled the order. That was for market. Again, you could either cancel in the bottom right hand corner or you can click on that little right facing arrow and just click on cancel order there. 
Another way to place your order is by simply hovering over the corresponding buy or sell side. So you can do so on either side here. Now, of course, as you can see, and depending on where you're hovering over, you'll see here that the buy and sell sides do change and the order types within them change. So above the market on the buy side, you're gonna get a stop. Below, it's gonna be a limit. On um, vice versa, if you're above the market on a sell, it's gonna be a limit and below it's gonna be a stop. This is just a good, uh, potential good way to mitigate loss, but not gonna get into too much of that here. That's kind of core functionality of trading. But just so you know, it's possible to place order types directly through the dome using that, uh, that functionality that I just mentioned. So if we hover above the market here, we can place our buy stop, click on yes. And then you'll see that it just pretty much sits there now. It hasn't been filled yet. And as you can see, it still says zero out of one. This just mean, means it is a working order. So keep that in mind. But as you did see before, we can either come over here, cancel our order directly through here. We have the option to replace different orders or change different prices within this. And we can reconfigure at any time. It's very convenient. You can change a quantity as well. So you do have quite a few options. As you can see, I just wanted to replace the order and update it with 11 instead of one. This is all hypothetical, of course, but again, just wanted to show you what exactly is going on here. I'm not gonna do this because this is an estimated margin of 76,000, but just wanted to show you exactly what was going on there. Just to show you one more time, we can cancel here in the bottom right, cancel all, and that'll knock us out of all working orders. But that should wrap it up for this video. Just wanted to show you the main functionality behind the matrix, the trading matrix in TradeStation. Again, this is also considered a dome on other platforms if you're not familiar with it already. If you do have any questions, please post them in the comment section below, or you can head over to our community forum and post them there. Please give this video a thumb, thumbs up if you found it helpful. Subscribe for more TradeStation content podcasts, trading psychology, tips, and much more. And as always, thanks for watching.